Go to Iceland. Let's go. We are at the airport. JFK going to Iceland. <laughs> I'm ready. Are y'all ready? All right, we are tired, but we are here. <laughs> we are in Iceland. We are waiting on Lara, who is in the back of the plane. Somehow, Christine and I managed to get two seats right in front of each other, slash behind Show each other. Show the goat decal. Oh, yeah, goat decal. We found what we thought were stickers. Turns out they're little window clings for kids to play with. And I am a child, so... I definitely was playing with it. <laughs> Where are we, Laura? Uh, oh, in Iceland. I was about to say baggage claim. Oh, we're, we're not, not there yet either. We're not so. even in baggage claim either. The infamous Hi, Blair. Hi, how are you? Good. I just waited the life for the bathroom. That's what I thought. No re-entry, hope you got everything. I do, I do. Oh, good. I think we're a little on board with the Icelandic hot dog. Oh, perfect, that's one of the things that... That's what my uncle is, that's what my uncle said. I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling I don't want to know what it is. I mean, it's lamb, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's gonna be delicious, though. Coffee, 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 latte, latte, tea. Oh this one's already ahead. Oop. Lara's already uh, all the way over here. I believe in you! So the goal was to touch the water. Oh, it's really deep! I sunk. But, uh... Careful, don't fall on that. Yeah, that's uh, pretty far down, and it's all rocks. Yeah, I'm not doing that. The Perlon Observatory that we're at today provides visitors with information about Iceland, as well as 360-degree views of Reykjavik and the surrounding area. The large glass dome sits on six hot water tanks supported by a hollow steel frame, which acts as a radiator. Hot water running through it in the winter and cold in the summer. Good morning, it is day two in Iceland. Yay! So one of the fun things about traveling is you never know what's gonna happen. We went off the road just a little bit, not too bad or anything. We're not like super stuck, but we're stuck enough that we're a big bus. <laughs> so we're gonna um get here and wait. Oh, she's gonna ration her mints and gum and her water. Serious right now. Desert. Yeah, especially because the color and the way the snow is blowing looks like the sand. The sun. This could easily be changed into sand. <laughs> All right, so instead of being stuck on the bus while they uh, figure this out, we're gonna um, strap on our crampons there. Blair's got hers on, and I've got mine on. They're pretty cool. Look at those. They're gonna grip the ice for us. We're about to go see. <laughs> are you? Are you okay? I believe in you. Grunting and spitting helps. A little bonus sightseeing. Well, we're stuck. <laughs> so Christine, what are we doing? Where are we going? We're going to see the bridge, the symbolic bridge that connects the Eurasia plate, the tectonic plate to the North American plate.
good morning everybody it is probably only eight o'clock or whatever it's it's not early but it feels very early we're tired you be tired yes yeah we're tired so. we got um a little little scare last night like two in the morning almost about uh trump and his proposed travel ban it turns out it doesn't apply to u.s citizens so ching we are good to go we don't have to cut our travel short we don't have to worry about any of that stuff on our way home, so. We're all mostly awake. Mostly, kinda. I think Lara's at like 60%. Fair? Fair, okay. I was gonna say something else, which I can't remember. Cause you're too distracted by my coolness. Oh, now I am. We're here at Sajalansfoss. It's a waterfall that's part of the Sajalansa River, and it originates under Eya Fjallla Jokul Glacier. The volcano that now lies quietly under this glacier, it erupted in 2010. But it's looking pretty calm today, so I think we're safe. Let's go explore. This is a little secondary waterfall. Can't reach it. No? Unless I go over the line. Uh, how you feeling there, Blair? <laughs> the fisheries section of the Skogar Folk Museum prominently features an eight-oared fishing boat named the Petursi, used for over a hundred years from its construction in 1855 to 1946. The walls and tables in the agricultural section are filled with tools, utensils, and toys. These include riding gear, haymaking tools, and dairy, woolworking, and ironworking equipment. Going out to the Open Air Museum, you're going to find a traditional turf farmhouse with separate buildings acting as different rooms. I think this is the storeroom. Uh, barely fit through this opening. And I'm pretty sure this is the Bat Stolfa, where families would do just about everything. Often people would sleep three or more to a bed and would have to use these intricately carved bedboards to block the edge of the bed so that no one could fall out. We are at a third waterfall. Do you remember what this waterfall is called, Blair? No, it's called. Perfect, me either. I'm dubbing this waterfall the Skogar Foss waterfall. We're in Skogar. Foss means falls, I think. That's what I'm deducing. This is my Icelandic language knowledge. It's a waterfall, though. We just can't walk behind it. Yes. The other ones we can walk behind when it is summer and it's not slippery from the, rain, or the ice. However, this one, you cannot. Well, friends, I was close. I said Skogarfoss. It's Skogarfoss. But we are right into the belly of the beast here. I can feel the spray. Do you feel it? The Solheim, Solheim uh, something glacier. I can't remember the last word, but it means glacier. So we'll be hiking. After, after the next few years, like most of that air is gone, but still there are some leftovers in it. Let's say 10, 15 percent, and that's why you cannot really see through because there is still some air left. Hmm. But because of this amazing compression, glacier ice is really hard and dense. It's solid as a rock. It's a mineral itself. It doesn't melt that fast. What 
you say was? Soul. Soul he mayoko. Soul he mayoko. My, yeah. I feel like if I said it, someone would know that's not <laughs> Oopsie. What happened? They caught, oh, they caught us. <laughs> so, so I was wondering where we are. Uh oh. We're oh. live, guys. We are about to go to breakfast. Start our last and final day with the tour. I'm going to continue on and stay in Iceland for a little bit by myself, but my friends are leaving tomorrow afternoon, morning, depending on where they're going. We're here at the greenhouses in Friedheimar, where our tour guide Margarita will explain how tomatoes thrive here. And here we have a lot of help from the nature. So we are using the hot water in the ground to heat it up the greenhouses. And the water when it comes here is around 95 Celsius degrees, 200 Fahrenheit, so it's like boiling. Mm. And then we have our wonderful bumblebees. They are in these boxes. They come from the Netherlands. They are around 600, flying around and helping pollinating all of the flowers. Just for you to have an idea, each one can pollinate 2,000 flowers a day, so they are quite busy during their work. These plants are 17 hours on and a little bit less in the summer. But for you to have an idea, this will be enough to use in a town of 3,000 people, so yeah, it's quite a lot. Welcome to Breed Hammer Stables. My name is Mira. There is no other horses than Icelandic horses in the whole Iceland. It doesn't matter how much you will try to find, but you cannot. Um, the first horses came to Iceland with the first settlements, with the Vikings. So Iceland has been closed for importing any horses over 1,000 years now. The main reason these days is diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have horse diseases here in Iceland, and we don't even vaccinate our horses. Also, when we go inside, you can see that they are shaped. So there is this stripe on the, under the belly, under the neck, beside of the both sides of the neck. It's too hot in the stable for them. So we help them cool down a little bit. We kind of open a zipper for them. So it's comfortable inside and also comfortable outside. Um, the most famous specialty with these horses are the gates. How the horse can walk or run. Like uh, most, all the horses in the world, they have walk, trot, and a canter or a gallop. And besides of those, our horses can do also tilt and a flying pace. We are currently on another stop in the Golden Circle route, a pretty famous and popular route in Iceland to take. Looks like all of our stops are going to be on that today. Right now we're visiting Geysir, which is a now dormant but once powerful geyser that gave origin to the English word geyser. I didn't put mine on. I'm being a rebel. Luckily, the Stroker geyser, located right behind the Great Geysir, is the most active geyser in Iceland. It erupts 15 to 20 meters in the air every 4 to 10 minutes, so we are pretty much guaranteed a show. It, as soon as we got here, we went... Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
Ooh. Here it is. <laughs> Walking to the Golfos waterfall. I think I think he said it means gold. That's what I was guessing. Gold, yeah. Because we're in the golden circle, right? Oh yep, we are in the golden circle. So Golfos. Man's land, which is between the two continental plates of Eurasia and North America. It's pretty beautiful. We're walking up to North America, right? Yep, sorry. That big, uh, like, rock face there is, it's not a fissure, what is it called? Fault. Line. Fault, the fault line of where this one broke away. It is now 40 meters. Kilometers. We're not going with like meters. We're, yeah. What? Meters, meters. It is meters, okay. It has sunk 40 meters. And every year can move up to 230 meters away from the two plates. Iceland's growing. Iceland is growing. Sinking. Growing and sinking, yes. The lava pulls up and creates a little bit more land, so. Wow, the geologist, volcanologist over guys. here. What were you doing? So Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry that I just I just missed it the first time. That's all. Oh, <gasps> I didn't know you were so easily offended oh. suddenly. Oh, ah, okay. I know. To, I understand now, and I will be more supportive. Dancing and you support me. Okay. I'll be more sensitive yes. and supportive. Yes. Thank oh, you. okay. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Alright, so the first time we were in hotel, we had the same size room, but we did not have this view. So, I was a little grumpy that we were staying here again. Not completely, because I knew to what to expect now, but I am much happier. Look at that view! Oh, I'm so happy right now. So I'm officially in Iceland by myself now. I'm just kind of walking around, walking my Airbnb. Um, I'm here at the apartment, this little Airbnb, which is really nice so far. I'm gonna wait to hear from Laura to see if she's staying or if she does have to go. So I'm just gonna get packed, uh, set, unpacked rather, not packed, not yet. Pa unpacked, settled in. A little street art in uh, Reykjavik. Walking down the street, yeah, walking down the street, yeah, ooh, ooh, yeah, walking down the street, yeah. I'm not taking my hand out of my pocket. Because it's cold so much. Falling in a hole. <laughs> There's a lot of art around here. Yeah, there is. Oh, I remember seeing this one earlier. <gasps> what? There's so much. Oh, oh. oh. I thought I saw this little art over I know, here. I know. Too. I caught my eye too, and then you almost fell. I, so I didn't know if you were yelping my about focus, the art. No, my focus was directed on your potential broken ankle. I could ruin everything. Oh no, I would brace me up, baby. We walking. Okay, all right, I'll get a little like cart and I'll pull you along. Perfect.
The sand at Venis Fiera Black Sand Beach gets its distinctive black coloring from the iron found in the basalt and other components of the sand. The beach here was formed when nearby volcano Katla erupted, and the interaction between the molten lava meeting the icy sea caused the lava to cool so rapidly that it almost instantly turned to sand and debris. Going to the ice caves of Katla. Tak fyrir. Tak fyrir. Tak fyrir. Tak fyrir. We're practicing our thank yous in Icelandic. Tak fyrir. But I can do a solhe my yokel. Yes, you can. Off-roading over the snow and ice in what our tour group called a super jeep brought us to the beginnings of the Katla Jokul Glacier, where we would find our cave underneath the Katla volcano. Just last year, in the winter of 2019, this cave was merely a one meter wide by one meter high water pipe. But by April, it had expanded wide enough to shuffle through a tour group on their elbows. Not even 11 months later, the ice has melted so quickly to be what it is today. Our guide guesses that this specific tunnel will only be around for about six to eight more months. Many people incorrectly assume that these are just mountains covered in ice when actually it's just pure ice all the way through, with layers of different colored ice and volcanic ash creating bold stripes throughout the cave. He's coming! Feet up! Feet up! Feet up! Yeah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Was it worth it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Large basalt columns called Reni Stranger, at least I hope that's how you say it, might be one of the first things you notice when you step onto the black sand beach. These hexagonal columns are caused by volcanic activity, but according to local folklore, they're actually trolls. These trolls weren't too bright, and they decided to venture out late at night to pull ships in from the ocean. Because they started so late, they weren't able to beat the sunrise back home and turned to stone when the first rays of light hit them. The sea stacks that line the beach are home to thousands of nesting birds like puffins, which weren't here when we were, unfortunately, fulmers, and guillemots. food! That's food. What is it? That's raw. Oh, is it? It's fish eggs. I don't know, kind of raw. You can eat that, you know. I mean, I'm not going to, but... I'm not going to, but... He said they have a reputation for being mean. I thought he was talking about the sea birds, but he said the sea waves. <laughs> I know, I just said, hi buddy! Hey! He might be waiting, he might be waiting for people to leave to come up on the floor. You think? He might be. I'm sorry buddy, we'll leave. It's our second to last day here in Iceland. Say good morning, Lara. Are we laid in bed this morning and we're lazy and it was great? We haven't done that yet this trip. The first part of vacationing that we actually did. The yeah. Vacation. Yeah, we haven't really had a chance to because the bus was like, go, 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 get up this early. Should have worn my elf out the socks. Oh no. Yep. Too late. Are they wet or are they falling? A little, I got a little slush. It's not too late, but the Airbnb is. Okay. You're right, it's way too late. It's we're so fun. far now. So we're just grabbing some breakfast now. It's like. Almost 11 o'clock, but do you even want to grab breakfast or do you just want to go grab hot dogs? What okay. time does the hot dog stand open though? 10 o'clock. Oh, beautiful. Do you know how to get there? Nope. All right, cool. We're getting Icelandic hot dogs from 
He said the stand has never closed in 34 years, 37 years? It has been open since 1937. They have never <laughs> once closed for That's anything. That's what it is. I knew I was getting a 37 from somewhere. We already have one thing closed. The volcano house is closed, we think, due to the COVID-19 thing. It's the only thing we've seen so far. First thing, though, first thing. First thing. Literally the best country in the world right now because everywhere else is closed. Everything is closed. Christine is in Dublin and there's like nothing open there. She can't Restaurant, do anything. Restaurants are closed. The restaurants are closed. Like the restaurants at the bottom of the hotel. Yep. Even in Ohio, they said that restaurants are closed to dine-in customers. Literally, and it's just it has been a week since I left and my entire county has shut down. The there food's gone no, in all the There was no problem when I left. No. Last Tuesday, completely shut down. Yep, food's gone in all the stores. Our friends Friends from Australia, they're ha like they're having the same thing. Things are shut down in Australia, so we know for a fact from people who are currently in Dublin and Brisbane. Shut down! Shut it down! Yep. Hello. Hi. May I have one of your delicious hot dogs with everything except the mayonnaise sauce? So half the works on it. Is it? Oh yeah. Does. They put it on the bottom here. Oh my god, it looks so much better than the gas station. It really does. Look at that bun. Oh, it's better sauce, too. Usually there's this big long line for these hot dogs. Just so. Can I do it? Yeah, you can do it. You didn't get a hot dog? No, we're going to go to the museum first of all. Oh. Are the nice now? They're highly recommended. <laughs> Yes, that looks good. Just not. <laughs> she can't even talk. <laughs> good morning, Laura Bruce. Good morning, Miss Becky. Last night was a little rough. Got a little sick. Something I ate or drank did not agree with me. Laura, who's putting in her eyes right now, took very good care of me because she's amazing. She ran and got me water from like the little convenience store right there. I was mistaken for a local. Oh, she was mistaken for a local. Who else is going to run into a bodega in their pajamas and wet hair, though, in the middle of the night? Local Lara Bruce, that's who. It is our official last morning in this beautiful, beautiful country. And I'm a little sad about it, but we're about to get on a bus pretty soon here. We got to finish packing up. And well, we're almost done. We did it mostly last night. Goodbye, Iceland. We are at the airport, currently waiting in line to check our bags. Well, she's got to check her bag. Her big old green bag. It's not that big. Green, green. This is a Norma small, Jean. I'm just going to go ahead and say, this is a pretty small bag. I mean, yeah, for... All right, it's been a long day of traveling. Um, we made it through customs. It was super easy. We had to get our temperature taken. We got off the plane, but it was normal. Normal as I am. Um, I go back to security, so I lost my Icelandic mustard. I was like, sure, they sad about it. I'm really cranky and tired. I'm so tired. It's like one o'clock in Iceland. I just need to sleep and I need to eat. Yeah.